Hello there, folks. DJ Bergstar here back with another tip of the day. So today I want to talk about Splice. Now, anytime Ableton Live is involved, um, I like to discuss that on my channel. And Splice has some nice integration with Ableton Live, and that's what I want to talk about today. Now, normally working with Splice, what you would do is in Ableton Live, you would install the Splice Bridge. And that way, you can sample or audition the Splice sounds with your track, um, and it'll be synced up to the BPM. And another great thing is you can also put effects on that channel to see what it's going to sound like um, with reverbs, delays, or any other things you want to do without having to purchase that sample first. Um, so you can audition as many as you want and have it in time. And that was really convenient. And that's how you would still work with Splice now. Um, but they've added this new uh, feature called Splice Stacks. So what I would say Splice Stacks is, is it's sort of a, you know, an AI way of um, getting you started if you kind of have writer's block that day or you just need some ideas to get going. Um, I wouldn't rely on them to be writing you a brand new track from scratch and just hit go and you're done, right? Um, I, you know, what you do is you take these stacks and what I like to do is just take bits and pieces of them uh, to create a new song rather than, you know, just using that whole stack and that's what I'm going to do. Let's go over what this is real quick. So, uh, first of all, you have to pay for Splice. Uh, you know, it's not free. Um, so you go to Splice and you have your credits that you're dealing with. Um, so you hit Sounds. And then here, there's this new thing called Stacks. Um, so you go to Stacks and you say Create New Stack. And in here, basically, you pick your style of music you're trying to work in. Let's go to just like Dance Pop here for now. And it'll just start playing immediately. Um, and what you can see is here, it picks out, you know, like some drums, bass, synths, some vocals, you know, and it's just randomly grabbing this and it's changing the pitch, basically, of some of these so it all fits together, um, you know, and all plays in the same key so it sounds like, a, you know, a track. Uh, so if you don't like this, you just hit New Stack. And, you know, let's say you liked this, uh, you can add some more instruments here with the plus. You can say, okay, well, I want a lead now, uh, you know, and then you can audition new leads over here. You can hear what these sounds like on solo. interesting I suppose um, or you can mute something and see what it sounds like without it so you know this one's interesting already it's not so bad you know um, and so if I had writer's block I may pick this and you know start working on it but what I want to talk about is the way um, splice integrates this with Ableton Live um, and so what you do is is I've already messed around with this for a while and I've got a bunch of stacks that I kind of and what's cool is is you can save these stacks without purchasing them first so you can just save tons and different stacks and come back and listen later and say did I like that or didn't I so let's just listen to a couple of these Some of them are, you know, kind of interesting. So let's listen to this one. I think I like this out of the best. That's why I named it demo here. So here's what you would do then is if you like this one and you want to integrate this into Ableton, instead of dragging each sample in separately and doing it the sort of regular splice way, um, they've got uh, this thing here now that you click on export and you can export this as a live project. So let's go ahead and do that. So when I do that now, 
Um, you'll notice, see this is at 140 BPM and it's got eight samples in it. So I'm gonna go export this to Ableton and it's gonna make a, uh, let's see here, a zip file. Uh, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna unzip it. And oh, let's see here. Okay. So this is the project that just exported to Ableton. So here it is, um, and this is what it'll look like once it launches. And let's double click on a couple things, you'll see what it did. So um, you'll notice if I click on some of these samples, look, um, it's changed the pitch here by two semitones. Um, so it's, it's done some things to make this work in the same key. Uh, some of these samples. Um, so let's listen to this and see how it sounds. It should sound the same as it did over there in Splice. So what I might do is, is just sort of start auditioning these and maybe not use them all. Um, so let's just go back and play. All right. Drums okay to start with, I suppose. That's a nice guitar. We'll leave that in. It's a nice bass. Okay. All right. What else we got here? Hmm. Not really sure if I like this sound. Let's leave that out. What's this? Oh, that's the vocals. And, you know, I probably use this, but I wouldn't have it playing the whole time, looping like that. I would just have sections of it coming in and out. We'll leave it playing for now. What else we have here? It's a decent guitar. Again, I might not have it playing the whole time. Also, it sounds a little distorted. I'm not sure why. Um, must be just part of the original sample, so um, I may or may not keep that, but... Let's see what this is. That's a nice piano. Definitely keep that in there. this. Ew, those are pretty bad. I'm not going to leave that in. All right, so maybe I would have these tracks playing um, from Splice, and so it's a good place to start, right? And of course, what Splice didn't do is, you know, I don't have any return tracks now. I would have to put in my delays and reverbs over here and whatever else I wanted to add as, um, you know, auxiliary tracks. And of course, there's nothing on my master yet. And then, you know, this stuff might need to be EQ'd and, um, you know, added more compression or something on some of these, just like you would any other project you're working on. Um, but basically, it just changed some of the pitches um, and things like that for you uh, to get this song started. And it could be a good place to start for you, these splice stacks. All right, not bad. So um, if you have Splice and you use it, um, you might want to start checking out some of these stacks and just just click on to your heart's content. You know, just keep going in here and and make new stacks. Uh, you know, and, and until you find a good one, right? Um, just create a new stack and try different styles. You know, maybe um, some rave here. You know, and just no, don't like it. So just move on fast. You know, you don't have to, you know, it's nothing you worked on. So you can just say, ah, yeah, no, you know, and just go through quickly. No. No. Mm, no. All right, it's got a little groove to it. So right away I can just say save. 
you can leave the name it gave or give it another quick one you know um, and then when I go back to my stacks over here they're all here that's the one I just saved right there so um, and I didn't have to pay anything to do that so I can come back to it later and see if I did like it or not um, so you know the stacks can be kind of fun um, and I do like the way it uh, you know works in live the way it exports everything nicely and um, you know has the transpositions there for you um, but I may not use them all it may sound good when I'm over in splice but then bring it over here and realize that oh one or two of these didn't really work um, and so it can be a good way of getting over writer's block and that's all I wanted to talk about today was these uh, splice stacks uh, that you can use and export into Ableton Live. Okay, well, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys on the next one. DJ Berkstar out.